Robin was there the year we got First Communion, and um, she certainly gave us, we, we had we had lots of wafers when we were practicing for communion anyway. And then we had, I had Miss Coyle for um, six years. That's Sally Coyle. She's now Sally Sharkey. She's uh, living and teaching up in Donegal. She's also a sister of Una Stafford down in Killing Care. Mm -hmm. uh, and she's married to Jimmy, or um, Una's married to Jimmy Stafford. And Una at the time was in Listen to Girls. So the two of them used to s share cars and one had dropped the other. And... Um, it was also a time of the, it was the swinging 60s, and um, Sally was young, very energetic. Um, I always remember her, they had, uh, the two of them had mini cars, and they even ventured to wear mini skirts. And, uh, but they were, uh, Sally, our teacher, was a brilliant teacher, and all that had, had her, uh, all the pupils that she taught, um, well, we're ever grateful that she did such a good job on us. And um, we didn't realise that we had been so well prepared for life until we were finished and we went on to secondary school and we discovered we had enough of Irish, English, maths and everything to take us right through. And um, for that we thank her. Um, we, had some, we had some funny incidents too. I remember we were doing plenty of Irish dancing and Moira Kellett used to, uh, who teaches dancing in Virginia, she used to come out and teach us in the school and we would be called upon to um, do the intervals in when there was plays on in Cross Hall and people like, um, remember one of the best times we had was the time um, Cobweb's Glory was um, the play that was on in Cross and we had um, uh, famous people of the area, John Farley and his sister Rita Murray, and um, Johnny Charlie, Johnny Charlie F Farley, and uh, lots of friends. And the people in the dance group. I don't think we weren't world champions, but we certainly loved our dancing. Uh, we enjoyed it, and everybody appreciated our efforts. And the people in that group were the Tate sisters, um, Marie Tate and Pauline Tate, and Philomena Logan. Catherine Allen, Catherine Tackney, myself, and um, there was various, Margaret Gillick, uh, Margaret Mary Gillick, and um, well, we, would, we loved being called upon and we enjoyed the bit of crack, and um, we enjoyed the play as well. We, we knew that play, in particular Cobweb's Glory, we knew it more or less off by heart after the season. There was other plays as well, but that was the one that we seemed to feature <laughs> most with. Um, it's one and only concert that we did as a school group, was with, um, kill, we joined with Kill and Care, and we did recitations and we sang uh, the main, and we also had a sketch, and I, for some reason, I'm not sure why I was picked to be a statue of Our Lady, but I know Our Lady got it very hard to keep from bursting out laughing during the whole thing. <laughs> But it was it's a great memory, and uh, all of our all the pupils were involved, and we great we we still talk about the time we were at the concert. I suppose because we only did that one. Uh, so we are such a small school; it was very hard to. We'd either be joining somebody else. Um, then I remember Father McCabe would come in every week, uh, uh, Father Patrick McCabe, and he would crisscross us on our catechism and uh, we made sure we knew it. And we also, um, he was great with the boys. He brought them to um, footballs and he kept the football li alive and well in the area. He kept every young fellow, he made sure, if they hadn't the lift, he made sure they got there and got home safe. And um, um, what was the other thing? Um, let me see. Um, our, another memory I have is um, probably some of you know Father Casey, and he he used to come on holidays to his uncle uh, James Tackney and Maureen and um, the family, and he used uh, he'd be when we were still in Ardlow he was in St Pat's and he used to come up um, sometimes to meet Andrew and Catherine and Peter, and walk down with us and sure he'd be telling stories of St. Pat's and that and um, uh, we, all, we were always amazed at his height even then because we were that bit younger but um, we just had some great memories of things like that and um, 
then in the summertime we would walk home by the roads and Nan Farley would always be out to hear the crack and she'd ask us had we any slaps today and what um, we were usually we had no slaps to report but would usually have so, some funny incident or something and she'd enjoy the crack with us and we'd meet Patsy and another fellow we'd meet regularly was Andy Dunn um, we, we only, our family owned, myself, Charles, Tom and James, we only went the road in the summertime so that we could sort of play with the neighbours on the way home. Otherwise we, um, from I'd say Halloween to Easter we always went through the fields, the, the shortest way. A few times we had a few narrow escapes, um, maybe a few cattle that thought we were a bit too noisy. And one particular time we nearly didn't make it to the ditch, um, there was this bull <laughs> in the field. It was Morgan's then, the slogan's now. And uh, we just made it and no more. And we were sort of pulling each, o pulling each other up the, the, um, across the, um, the ditch. And we, we got safe anyway. Um, we used to meet Andy Dunn. He was a great friend of our family for two or three generations. And... Um, He'd often give us a tropany bit each, and we'd be grateful. We really enjoyed his, you know. Um, another thing we did when we were in Ardlow with Sally Coyle, I was always amazed how, now that I'm teaching, um, she was, she seemed to cover cover every part of the curriculum, and we never, I still can't figure out how she managed to do so much and to get it all done with eight classes even though there were small numbers, she still covered everything. And she always had time to sew and knit and sing. And we did loads of those kind of things. So it was a bit of a miracle, really, in a one-teacher situation. Um, so well, I think I, I, I try to her, follow her example in some of the scene I'm teaching myself in so, with some of the you know things and ideas that she even had then, you know. Right, okay. Well, certainly there are some lovely memories. Rosemary, isn't it? Yeah. But I'm just wondering, in the wake of all of that conversation and your memories from Arlo School, where did the wellies ever go? <laughs> oh, I still have a grand black pair that I use for counting the cattle. Because <laughs> I'm living down in, um, uh, well, it's the locals call it Grouse Hall Barracks. And um, there's plenty of fields and there's always an odd bit of mud here and there, so I enjoy going out. And um, I always enjoyed the Harman. And even when I went to secondary school, myself and Catherine Tackney went to Loretto, and um, the first thing you do is get home and get into the wellies, and there'd be cattle to be moved, or there'd be something to be done, and our house was the house where if you were there, you chipped in, and that was it, you know. So um, it was always busy. Daddy would be on the road with the creamery trailer, tractor and trailer, and uh, Mammy was the main farmer farmeress and uh, we all helped I, we and we had little bits we'd always be moving cattle here and there and carrying our bundle here on our back and there was always a bucket of something to be brought to some some animal and um, we we were always busy and happy mm. and on the go do you have a lows to say to anybody well i'd like to say um hello to um well, all the people we were at school with. Uh, um, I want to say, as I think Catherine has already mentioned, a thank you to all the sponsors. Uh, we have sponsors locally, uh, all the local businesses, and also we have had a lot of sponsorship from past pupils in Australia, America, uh, England, um, all over the world, really. We've had letters for stuff for the book and that, and um, we've had a lot of... Um, we, I, we've had a great fun uh, since this started. In fact, last summer, I think it was Sella Fox and a few of them were home from England, and they were saying, you know, make sure that we all get together. And, like, we had been talking here locally, but um, really those people home in the summer sort of got us going, made us move. We were inclined to sit back and um, say, hello to, say hello to Sella Fox and all the gang in London. And also... Um, the people in New York, uh, especially my uncle Tom and all those, Tom Conway, and um, just to load everybody this this has connections with Ardlow. 
Indeed, in a nutshell, that's one of the best ways of doing it. Rosemary O'Reilly, of course, that was formerly Rosemary Conway. It's just gone 25 to 12. Romney Road's live from McCavan Studios here on Northern Sound. We still a bit to go, obviously. However, the lines are closed for the quiz, and um, we will be bringing you the results of that very, very shortly. But we'll say a very good evening to Susan McDermott and family in Newblis. Also, Mary McCarville and daughter Helena, and indeed Patsy Riley as well. And I'm told here that uh, Susan has finally got over Cavan beating Fermanagh in the Ulster Championship. You see, Susan is a Fermanagh lady, though she lives in Nublis, but she has now become a member of the Cavan Fan Club, and she is now cheering and will continue to cheer for Cavan in the Championship. PJ, no, oh no, sorry, uh, Lockie McGinn, I beg your pardon, it was just a bit of paper here, we got mixed up. Lockie McGinn, Rath Frylan in County Down, good evening to you. You'd like a little bit of music, well we'll have that coming up in a moment also. And we will repeat that result of the Cavan Minor Championship match played earlier this evening. Baileyborough at 2-11, Mount Nugent 5 points. And results in County Monaghan this evening in the under-21 competitions, Dunamoyne 17, Airog 1-8, Castle Blaney 1-12. Scottstown 1-6, True 2-13, and Sean McDermott's three goals and seven points. That's what it says here, and we have no reason to doubt it because we had John Graham on a little bit earlier on in the programme. Now, we were telling you at the top of the programme, of course, last Thursday night was a big night for Kay and Nashville Sound because they launched a brand new cassette and had a great night over there in the hideout and a lot of fun and a lot of entertainment, a lot of music and a very, very big crowd and a beautiful group and very enjoyable, very entertaining. And tonight we have two cassettes to give away from Kay and Nashville. So our thanks to them. And incidentally, well, I'll tell you what I'll do. We'll play a little piece of this first and then we'll bring you the results of the quiz. This is a little piece from one of the people, of course, that are part of that group that formed a few years back. Theresa Mark. And Theresa, of course, was also at one stage a member of the Sheila and Wren Boys and she toured America and wrote songs and compiled them and all this sort of thing and still does a fair bit on the accordion. This is a little flavour from Theresa Markey. That's just a little flavour there of Theresa Markey on the accordion, a member, of course, of Kay and Nashville Group. And uh, that is uh, one of the two cassettes that we will be giving away tonight for the lucky winners. Just to remind you also, of course, about that big festival coming up at the weekend in Mount Nugent. It's the Mount Nugent Tourist Development and GA Bank Holiday Weekend Festival starting July 31st and continues and indeed concludes on August the 4th. And there's a lot of activity there. It's certainly one of the most comprehensive that I've seen in a long, long time, and there's a lot of action, a lot of activity, and there'll be lots of fun there. It starts on Thursday, that's July the 31st, coming at uh, 10 p.m. on to 1. There's a teenage disco there in the GA club rooms, and indeed there's a mineral bar there only. So if you're thirsty, the mineral will still do the job for you. On Friday the 1st at 7 o'clock, a ladies' football match, 8 o'clock under 14 football final for the Tony Murray Memorial Cup. 10 o'clock, first heat of the game for a laugh, £100 in prize money there, and also a selection of the 97 Festival Rose music will be provided by Chimes on the Night. Then on Saturday, starting at 11 a.m., junior fishing competition unlock Sheelan and entries there to John Murphy. At 2 o'clock, sports day in the GA grounds, races for all ages, tiny tots, under 16 boys and girls, plus novelty races and sideshows. 7 o'clock on Saturday evening, professional bicycle race, through the village, followed by a presentation of prizes in the Bridge Inn. Second heat, off game for a laugh on the same night, and music by Southern Comfort. On Sunday, at 1 o'clock, 1 to 3, car treasure hunt, valuable prizes there again. At 2 o'clock, pavement painting, plus wheel-a-bin races, 
4 o'clock dust duck race on the River Inney and Terrier Racing and Donkey Derby. Bunny Baby Show, 0 to 12, 12 to 18 months and 18 to 24 with Skittles at 6 o'clock in the pub yard. Music in the lounge with New Smokey. 11 p.m. on Sunday night, Monster Barn Dance and Barbecue in the GA Club Rooms and music by Eddie Owens and Top Gear. While on Monday, the last day of the festival, starting at 2 o'clock, Triathlon for over 14s at Crover Shore. Cycle Run and Row, then at 3 o'clock, Boat Races, Ladies and Gents Mixed. While at 4 o'clock, Children's Walking Treasure Hunt, and at 6 p.m., the Tug of War. 10 p.m., final of the Game for a Laugh, plus a draw for a return flight to New York, or rather, and $300, that's plus $300, spending money and music finally in the lounge on the night with Links. That's all happening in Mount Nugent on this bank holiday weekend coming up. Now, where would you get it, as they say? Right, it's uh, just after 20 to 12, Ramlin Roads, live from Cavan here. And the winners of our quiz, we picked out number 11, and that coincided with the name of Vera McPhillips from Rockcurrion County, Monaghan. That was number 11. The next number that came out was number 90, and the name in front of that was that of John Monaghan from Drumbarry in Kinnelec. So that's a separate cassette going, obviously, to both of those. Well done. Congrats to you, Vera McPhillips in Rockcurrion, and also John Monaghan in Drumbarry. That will be on its way to you shortly. Stay with us for the rest of this programme particularly for the next part of it. Everybody will turn down the TVs and listen very, very careful to this. Our next speaker on our Ardlow School reunion conversation is the name of that of Kathleen Holland, who, of course, was one time better known as Kathleen Rock, but now Kathleen Holland, married to Jean. Very good evening to you if you're listening. And I spoke to Kathleen about memories of the school days. There's just one that comes to mind is the day the dentist came. <laughs> it was a very hard day. You just pull your tooth, chunk a lump of cotton wool into it, and send you home, and that was it. Other mm. memories was we used to have to go down to the well, down Tackney's well, they call it, down the road, and some two, maybe myself and Margaret or Catherine or somebody, it'd be picked to go for the bucket of water and of course we'd go down and get the bucket of water and come back up again and maybe empty it out half ways and go back again and we wa waste time, you know, to not have to go back to school. Yeah, Margaret, uh, Mar I'll introduce you here, Margaret Farley, of course you were then now, Margaret Maleri, and also a past pupil of the school, I presume, and uh, certainly many different memories. And just when Kathleen talks about the dentist coming, I mean, we remember when we used to get the injections too, and quite honestly, a lot of us didn't know what they were for or what they were about, only that they were damn sore for a day or two afterwards. Yeah, that's right. Uh, very, very sore. We used to have to go up to the dispensary, which was up in... The pub was there as well in Inches. The doctor used to come there every Wednesday. And when you would need to, to have your injections, you used to go there. And sometimes you mightn't get off from school. You'd have to go up during your school time and back to school after your injection. A lot of us wanted the ha half day sort of thing, but we, we didn't succeed in getting it sometimes. Sometimes it all depended on what mood Miss Stack was in. We, we might get round her, and there again we might not. My memories of our fond memories of our school. Um, one in particular wasn't too good. Was the inspector used to come to the school? I don't know, maybe once a year or something like that. But I was put standing on a stool to look out the window to watch the inspector come. But in the meantime, something happened. A commotion started behind me, so I turned round to see what was going on, and the inspector walked in the door. And needless to say, I wasn't. Miss Stack's favourite pupil for the rest of the day. The p inspector walked in and there was a big commotion in the school, so I wasn't the favourite pupil for a while after that. You were reprimanded. I was reprimanded. Uh, yeah, just on the bucket of water there, Kathleen was saying, I think it was one bucket of water did about 20 or 25 children. Um, we had a steel basin and we'd wash our hands in it and a towel that you bring a ch different child each week not to bring home to wash it and also that bucket of water was used for drinking too so we were we certainly used the water sparingly at that time anyway there was no running water or anything and we used to have to sweep the school in the evenings too and the dust 
Milkman used Wouldn't to come it? as well, and we used to right, get her milk and hang it up on little latches on, along the wall to bring home us in the evening. Once our milk, we had, I think it was three pints of milk to take home, but my sister, whatever she was doing, she ran underneath and smashed the whole thing, so we had no milk for the day. We had to go and get it from a local farmer. Uh, my memories of Arla School are quite good. I have two brothers and a sister that went to Arla School. Uh, football was quite prominent in our house. My two brothers played football. Mm, my younger brother, Charlie, played for the vocational school in Virginia and won, I think it was a championship medal there. Uh, we played a bit of football as well. We had to play with the boys. Um, quite good. You know, we're looking forward to this weekend, uh, meeting lots of pupils. So lots of my class now away in England and America. I have a brother that's coming home on Wednesday for this reunion. And looking forward to a lot of my school chums from England that are coming home as well. Mm -hmm. And it should be a, a great opportunity for everybody, to, young and old, to get together and go well, over old times. Exactly. Well, I'm sure it will. Now, a lot of people, I suppose, would have different memories from the school. But what about, Kathleen, your first day at school? Have you anything there at all? Or even the day you finished up? What age you finished at? I finished uh, when I was 14. 14 years of age and I was very glad to walk out that gate that day and say goodbye. <laughs> That's the, no, I have no memories of my first day at school. But memories we have of getting our photograph taken and the postman would be passing, Tony Root was his name, the postman, and he, we used to bring, the photographer would bring him in and he'd sit in for the photograph or stand in. And, James Farley was talking about the Ardlow school float we had on St. Patrick's Day in Muller. Well, we had pupils, like a few of the past pupils was on the float. And uh, Miss Stack was our teacher, and I was picked as Miss Stack to go on the float. And she did a very good job to her uh, as yeah. Miss Stack. Uh, <laughs> and indeed, we got second prize in, in the parade that day in Muller for our float and uh, you were asking Kathleen about her first day at school or her last day I think Kathleen can remember maybe my first day at school because she used to bring me to school through the fields <laughs> Alice Taylor spoke and uh, for a couple of years I think it was Kathleen wasn't it that's right yeah yeah we used to go to school together and uh, Owen Cooney and Jerry Cooney of um, Lister Bontry walked to school the four of us walked uh, every morning over to school and um, I remember one time um, a billy goat uh, came to took up residence around us on the fields and uh, we were scared stiff of him and the teacher used to send Kathleen or maybe um, Betty Sheridan or some of the other girls home in the evening with us so that they'd protect us and mind us from <laughs> I don't know what they were going to do but <laughs> 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 they got us home safe anyway <laughs> And Catherine's mother used to come up halfways, and there was a meeting point, and I used to go down and collect Catherine and then bring her the rest of the way to school. And uh, I brought Owen Cooney to school as well. He lived over past our house. Right. Now, we talked a wee bit earlier, I think it was to Nelly, who was responsible in many ways for making the tea for the teachers. That sounds as though... that. The teachers were the only people that got the tea. What about the pupils and what they would have for lunch and little things like, was it the bottle of milk? I mean, the bottle of milk. milk, yes. Brought your own you brought your own, brought your own slice of bread. No, we never got tea, Michael. We were never honoured. No, <laughs> and there's a stream runs by the school, and in the summertime, um, I heard it from older pupils and myself, I never remember doing it, they would put the bottle of milk into the stream to keep it cool. Yeah. And then in the wintertime, uh, the bottles of tea would be put around the fire at and uh, coming up to about 12 o'clock and the corks would be taken off mm. but some lad would go up to the fire to pair his pencil or something and he pop back in the the cork so he can imagine what happened mm. then there was an explosion all over mm. the place and i think older uh, pupils one of them have wrote in our book that um, one lad put chestnuts in the fire when he was lighting it one day and that there was a huge explosion and it blew the blackboard down off the stand and everything that so there was some hijinks at school too mm. okay now we talked to somebody else also earlier on about school no 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 
nothing. No, there was school tours near the end of my days of school, but we were never allowed to go on them. My mother and father thought probably that we might never come back alive if we went on them, <laughs> but we never went. Yeah, we that never. is a fact, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We never, we never allowed go, and we used to have to bring our sodded turf or two every day to school for the fire. Now, you have to be very careful when you reply to this, but looking back on those number of years that you were at school, was there any fellow young fellow at the school then that you had your eye on? No. <laughs> no. No, cat. I'm only very much in love with one man. <laughs> but I'm talking about then, I'm not talking about now. Um, no. 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 No, romances did blossom uh, back, I suppose, years before that. Um, we have in our book, with, uh, I think it's about six photographs of weddings of um, Kathleen's mother and father both went to Ardler School. Now, I don't know whether it was from looking across the classroom that they met or whether it was after that, but um, they were one of the couples that um, went to Ardler School. And so um, there's a number of other ones as well. Nelly might be able to come in on that and tell some tales on the boys and girls. No, she I used to. You peep across the wall. <laughs> I never see that. You had a gawk. Gawk, that's right. <laughs> no, see, I don't um, think we were as far advanced those no. days as they are now. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. No, my, my not like me. No, boys, di boys didn't come into it at all. No. We had too much enjoyment ourselves but to worry about the boys. Even the boys kept to their own they side. They kept to their own the side of the was, playground. Yeah. The girls mm. kept it. was to segregated really. Mm. Boy, it was a boys yard and a girls yard. Yeah. The boys played in their yard and the girls played in theirs. And that but was basically yeah. it. Yeah. The only fun was going home from school. Yeah. Yeah. The boys and girls then. That was about the only yeah. time that we joined together yeah. was going home from school. In, in yeah. later years. Sally Kyle used to keep us from talking and she'd put a bye and a girl sitting together. Mm. To, keep, mm. to keep us from talking. So I suppose that was the way we grew up, that we weren't supposed to talk to them, really. <laughs> and we used to go up from school in the evening and we used to have an old penny. And we used to go into Alfie Lynch for sweets. And then as we grew older, we used to buy the cigarettes. And uh, three or four of us would smoke out of the one cigarette. Miss Stack used to send us for her cigarettes and sometimes Alfie mightn't be open so we'd have to go all the way into town. So she'd lend whoever she sent to the shop for our bags, she'd lend the bike for us to go to the town. And that could have taken all day. <laughs> <laughs> we wouldn't be back in an hour or two, let's put it like that, it could take a couple of hours. We look forward to her being sent to the town. And the pull of the fag. And, <laughs> and the pull of the fag is right, Michael. And the poor and children at home, when she had no cigarettes, <laughs> she must have been... <laughs> they suffered. They suffered. Were you ever caught smoking, any of you? Oh, no. 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 We had we had hiding places up around the windmill and up around there. Was there any particular or special part of the schoolyard where you dined? You used it as a canteen, a certain corner beneath a tree or anything like that? At the back of the school, more or less, we sat and had our lunch. And that was all. There was no, there was no tree, really. No. There was no landmark in the yard, really. See, uh, most of the boys, uh, way we'd have our lunch was in, in, the, in the school during lessons, so we'd be able to get a full half hour of football. Most, mostly, the, we'd be nibbling at our lunch under the desks. And as soon as the bell would go, we're out for the game of football. That was, uh, I think, was the most important part of the school day to us, anyhow. Uh, I can, uh, Catherine said there about the one bucket of water. I can remember after the game of football coming in, especially in the summer, we'd, we'd be fairly thirsty, and was, the bucket of water would be there, and one tumbler, was one plastic tumbler was all that was there, and so the first lad, he'd lift it, and they'd give it the second fella, he'd be so thirsty, he'd probably put his head into the bucket. <laughs> we weren't very hygienic, but we didn't do it with any harm, any, I don't think. Not a bit in the world. Now, if you think of anything else, you're quite entitled to come back to me, but you just reminded me of something else. When we were talking about the dentist, and we were talking about the doctors, and we were talking about the nurses, and we talk for a minute about the sacraments, because, I mean, preparing for the sacraments, it was also something very special at school, and many different memories from that, Father Leo. Oh, yes. Um, preparing for First Communion, first of all. That was a long process. 
uh, Father Macaulay was very, very particular about our preparation. Uh, I remember one, one thing from his uh, lessons, just one, for First Communion. He was talking about breaking the fast. Now, of all the ridiculous things you could talk about, he said, if you ate a lump of a stick, that would break the fast. But if you took up a pebble and t swallowed the pebble, that wouldn't break the fast. Now, that certainly was hair splitting. Anybody take up a lump of a stick and take up. But um, confirmation was a much more serious matter. Because the bishop only came, usually at that time, the bishop only came every five years to administer confirmation. Now it's every single year, which is a very good thing. But that time, uh, there was a lot of, a lot of soul searching for it. Dr. Trainer was the diocesan examiner, he was a strict man. And as far as I remember, uh, Charlie perhaps could correct me on this, did you, were there various degrees of passes? You got a ticket for confirmation. Were, were there different colours f for merit? I, I had a feeling there was. There was a while there was something like that, all right, but that was discontinued as far as I remember, that they were all the one colour then afterwards. But there was a while, there was a year or two, there was something in that. Uh, Father McCoy, he was a great man, uh, and he never got a car, as you know. He had a pony on trap. The school, when he came to the school, we'd, uh, well, when we were in third or fourth class, we'd be sent out to hold the pony. But he never bought a car. He had a, he finished, he never, he never owned a car, as far as I remember. You remember the pony? He had a great pony on trap. And uh, you'd, um, no one had passed him on a bicycle. I remember we tried a couple of us, to, and he did the pony a whip, and he was gone by, uh, and we were good on bicycles at him. But uh, he was a great pony. He was from, as far as I remember, from Cavan. And there were great horse sheep. Adam McCauley's people were great horse sheep. I think they owned the Farnham Hotel at that time. Yeah, his brother owned it, yes. Right, OK. Well, yeah, we'll continue anyway with our subject and talking about confirmation. And as you rightly say, I mean, confirmation only came around every five years or so, which meant that really, if you were a boy, you would be on the fringe of shaving, I suppose, what the girls would be doing. I'm not too sure at that age, but anyway, we'll not go into that one. But yes, a lot of the boys might be 16, 17 when, when the term, when the confirmation would come up again. And I mean, coming back, getting instruction, joining thing, children who are a third of their size. And uh, it was quite, a, it was quite, a, this confirmation was quite an experience. But I, I came across a poem in this same Bory log about um, confirmation among the early settlers in Australia. And circumstances much the same as what would be anywhere in rural Ireland at the time that Ardo School was in its heyday. And uh, this poem, it tells about, especially about one of these big men who came back for confirmation. And the name of the place where confirmation was held was Tangmalangaloo. I'm sure many uh, many listeners would have heard this poem because it's quite well known, but perhaps we'll go through it for a moment. The bishop sat in lordly state and purple cap sublime and galvanized the old bush church at confirmation time. And all the kids were mustered up from 50 miles around with sundered toes and staring eyes and ignorance profound. Now was it fate or was it grace whereby they yarded to an overgrown two-storied land from Tang Melangaloo? A hefty son of virgin soil where nature has her fling and grows the trefoil three feet high and mats it in the spring. Where mighty hills uplift their heads and pierce the welkin's rim and trees sprout up a hundred feet before the shooter limb. There everything is big and grand, and men are giants too, but Christian knowledge wilts alas at Tangmalangaloo. The bishop summed the youngsters up as bishops only can. 
He cast a searching glance around, then fixed it on his man. But glum and dumb and undismayed through every bout he sat, he seemed to think that he was there, but wasn't sure of that. The bishop gave a scornful look, as bishops sometimes do, and glared right through the pagan in from Tang Malang Malu. Come tell me, boy, his lordship said in crushing tones of ear, come tell me, why is Christmas Day the greatest of the year? How is it that round the world we celebrate that day and send a name upon a card to those who are far away? Why is it that wandering ones return with smiles and greetings too? A squall of knowledge hit the lad from Tangalangaloo. He gave a lurch, which set to shake the vases on the shelf. He knocked the benches all askew, upending of himself. And oh, how pleased his lordship was, and how he smiled to say, That's good, my boy. Come tell me now. And what is Christmas Day? The ready answer bared a fact no bishop ever knew. It's the day before the races at Tangalangaloo. <laughs> but Michael, before you go away, perhaps we could underestimate the value of uh, these country schools uh, at that particular time. You know, when you have all the wonderful gadgets you've got in schools now, computers, television sets, all, all these masterful things. But go back now, just take that one of those schools which amalgamated to form Ardor, that was Raffany School. And three granduncles of Padre McCabe's, I don't know if Padre's still here, three of his granduncles became priests. Two of them in the Diocese of Kilmore and one in the Diocese of Down and Connor. And two of my own granduncles from the same lane and the same school became priests who were both ordained in. Cape Town in South Africa. Now, in addition to that, Catherine already mentioned uh, the O'Farrellys. Uh, there was Professor Alphonsus O'Farrelly. He went to school in Raffany, that one-room school. He became Professor of Science in University College Dublin until he retired. And his sister, Agnes O'Farrelly, was one of the most famous women of her age. She was one of the first ladies in Ireland to become a graduate. She was one of the founder members of the Gaelic League. She organized Gaeltoch schools in Ranafast. She organized uh, home industry for the women of the Gaeltoch. She was one of the ladies who organized Camogie in the country. And all that came from a one-room school. So we shouldn't uh, think in this age of so much technology that these schools were uh, inadequate. Oh, they turned out to raise some wonderful pupils. You were asking Cathy, <coughs> had she your eye on any fellow when she was at school? It's going to come out in the washing now, is it? Oh, is it going to come out? Well, I had a horror of, there were big girls at school, you know, too, just the same as there were big fellas coming for confirmation. And for some reason or another, maybe I was a comedy youth, but some of these bigger girls used to carry me around in their arms, and I hated girls. <laughs> I hated them. I've overcome it, though. <laughs> So there were the lighter moments, but, you know, you carried all these things away in your uh, memory afterwards. Um, the, the, <laughs> these, uh, James, James mentioning the school fire smoking, I, I don't think it ever, that fault was ever overcome, was it? No, I don't think so. 
I don't think, but the jackdaws got into the chimneys and, and uh, uh, it was very, very difficult to start a fire and you were very unpopular if it was your turn to start the fire and get it away. Nelly used to bring in a coal, but there was no, you wouldn't get a coal from Mrs. Kellett who lived beside the school in our time. She'd run you mm -hmm. so that you had to start off from scratch and there wasn't all that many newspapers around or with bits of stick or, or whatever else. But uh, it could be a cold place. It could be a very cold place. Um, but I, I, so we want to send out greetings, of course, from here. That's right. To all the pupils that we knew in those schools. There are many of them still alive. Perhaps some of them per perhaps will be listening tonight. Some of them have returned from abroad, wherever they are, just to celebrate with us. And we offer them a welcome home. They can't meet a fault if they've been abroad. We send out greetings to all of them, young and old, because the memories of all these people who went to school with us are precious things. We may have had our differences, we may have been scared of the teacher, we may have disliked Father Macaulay, but the pupils, we grew to like every single one of them. And I, on behalf of, well, I, there has been already greetings sent to them, but I, I wish on my own behalf and everybody here to greet all of them tonight. Wish them health and happiness and please God they will be with us on at the celebration. Right, okay. Right, Kathleen, we're coming towards the end. Does anybody else have anything to say? Maybe you, you as Vice Chairman, obviously, of the Organising Committee, James Rock, to the people that came on board the people that help you along to carry this and to steer it through to a very special weekend that you're looking forward to, Bank Holiday Weekend, coming up. Well, I wish to thank everybody that helped us from start to now and that will come and come and come, and come to the weekend and celebrate with us and help us out. So I'm very thankful to everybody and anybody that helped me out along the way and give us sponsorship and done anything for us. So it was a privilege to be back working at the school and all the rest. And I still have plenty to do ahead over the next few days. Mm -hmm. So that's it now, Michael. Right, well, memories I made of this. Charlie, you don't happen to have a funny little piece just before we finish off with Catherine? Mm -hmm. At the school, well, uh, there was a fellow who used to go uh, when he started getting the pension and uh, he used to go into town and if we saw him going at lunch time um, we'd hang about maybe at three or shortly after to see whether he'd be coming home with a uh, donkey and cart and uh, he was uh, <laughs> everyone knew him as Jack but he, you may as well hit him as uh, call him Jack all he wanted to do was John so uh, there were certain potatoes uh, uh, there was a neighbour who used to kill you in it, and they were with them all gathered up to give him a hand to put in the potatoes. So uh, everyone knew that uh, he didn't like to hear the name of Jack. So they said to him, one said to the other, ah, not going to be a good day today. Oh, I don't know, it won't be that bad. Why, what are you going with? Yeah, he said, the lock of them Jack does flying round and once you see them flying low he said it's surely going to have a, a bad day and so he was the other side of the red setting too and he looked up and he said then the now they said don't say jack does then the now they say johnny does <laughs> <laughs> are you looking forward could i ask you a silly question to this weekend coming oh yeah very much so michael yes yeah yeah well we were i started there and Finished there, well, all I, we got no secondary education, you know, we don't eat the national every day, there every day, but I enjoyed it, and uh, we, had, like, we had great memories of it, we had, you know, we had great fun at playing at school and going home then doing some development or something, you know, uh, there was another fellow used to go to, used to go up to Lynch's and we used to watch him come and, and uh, he had a nickname and we used to shout at him the way down we saw him come and we'd shout at this nickname at him and he'd come over then and try to get a quality so with a stick and he went in and told the master one day and we got six laps apiece for 
but call this man names. <laughs> he was from Killing Care. <laughs> and he used to go up to the local pub, you know. And uh, we used to love to see him come, and then we'd shout, say, there's this nickname at him. And, you know, we used to get good, like, we had good fun. Yeah, well, the brains are probably put into action now, and they were trying to figure out who this fellow was. Rosemary, do you want to say something? Well, I just want to say that, um, we're, we're all looking forward to um, all relatives, young and old, coming together. And our family in particular, we're looking forward to own Conway coming, because he's in his 80s, and Hale and Hearty in London. And 84. 84. And he's looking forward to it. So we're hoping that all goes well and that everyone is healthy and happy and able to enjoy themselves. Good. Exactly. All right. Well, just as we started, we'll finish with Catherine Murphy. Catherine. The countdown is well underway now. Uh, yeah, just to say that um, our chairman of our committee was Padraig McCabe of Raffney, and Padraig was unable to attend here tonight, and he sends his apologies. But he would like to thank all the members of the committee who came to the meetings, and for all the people that worked at the school, and for the people that worked on the book, especially those that didn't go to Ardo School but came in and rode in and worked the same as the rest of us. And um, he hopes that we'll all have a. He's looking forward to a great day on Saturday and Sunday, Monday the next and he liked to meet everybody and he's extending a welcome to everybody to come and I'd just like to thank uh, Parik Tate who I think has the tea ready for us now Michael so like all good things we'll end up now with a cup of tea. Thank you very much. Indeed and thank you for your courtesy as well. That was of course Kat Catherine Murtha, not Murphy as I may have stated there, Catherine Murtha that was. And thanks to all those people. Do hope you will have a great weekend. I'm sure you will have. We're gone away over time. Our thanks to our sound engineers, Brendan and indeed Cyril. And thanks to all who rang in with replies to the quiz and those that rang in with requests as well. Hope you enjoyed tonight's programme. And before I wrap up, just a few hellos to Paddy Riley and his family in Dungannon. And thanks for your kind comments. Incidentally, last week, Paddy, congratulations. Uh, congratulations to Monaghan Ladies. That comes in from Elko Oil, sending good wishes to Monaghan Ladies and capturing the National League title at Waterford's expense over the weekend. And by the way, the answer to our quiz tonight was, well, if you describe somebody as being getting... Um, James Farley, Phelan Lynch, Rosemary Catherine Allen, they're talking there to Catherine Allen, they're talking there to Catherine Allen there. She's Catherine Morton now, and... Well, any, anyone I know... Did you get off lightly because the teacher was living in your house? Oh, God, no. Oh, they took it out? <laughs> oh, they did. And just the, just the same. brought the story home to your mother. Yeah. We couldn't meet from school that time. Or anything like that. Or living close enough and that. Right, we'll just remind them once again that we're talking to a group of people here about a school reunion that's coming up August bank holiday weekend, Ardlo School, that's in the parish of Cross Smaller. Charlie Conway, could I talk to you for a minute on a subject that people oftentimes don't like talking about, and that is the early days in the school, the schoolyard and the toilet facilities and things like that. How did you fare out on that end of it? Well, there was a wee, a couple of wee houses, but there was no running water or no nothing. And uh, there was one uh, the girl's side and there was one on the boy's side. So there was a big high wall between at the back of the school. I think it's, it's there yet. Well, you stuck a bit out of it there, I think. Yeah, <laughs> 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 built up the outside uh, wall. Yeah, that's right. And... Uh, uh, you went out there and there was uh, the facilities were very very crude you know but you did your business yeah, you did. and they done the job yeah, done the that's th what you're trying to tell me <laughs> you done the business right like, there was a bit there was a seat there was a, a board across and there was a uh, a bit of a vacancy. <laughs> <laughs> and then, then there'd come a man ever so often to clean out the toilets. And there was one man that used to come and his son used to say the father had a good job, he was working on the schools, but he never said it was sanitation. <laughs> and indeed, in later years, he came to uh, another man used to come and the teacher always pet him before he went to do the work. 
because she didn't wish for him to come into the school after he did the work. So mm. now we can gather why <laughs> that was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but there was always the boys and the girls' oh playground. Yeah. And That's right. That you darn not come round. Oh, I darn't come round. I got the best whack on top of the head uh, or ever I got in my life. I, I, I put my head across the wall. Well, the girls, uh, it wasn't the toilet, it was the... <laughs> The thing that was sitting on it. The skipping rope. <laughs> you know, they were they had a the skipping rope together, and we, we had the high wall, and I climbed up a couple of us pushed climbed up and to look across to see just the other side that the girls was at the, with the skipping rope, mm. and there was someone who come there with a uh, with a, a stick, and. I got the best whack ever I got in my life on top of the head with this stick. I soon come down. Yes, <laughs> 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 it was all in good faith. Ah, I, mean, a bit of fun, oh, yeah, there were, there were, uh, I enjoyed the school. We had, uh, you know, we had great, uh, we had great fun. We'd go out and kick the ball then in, in, in the meadow or Lynch's Bottom, as we called it that. Um, and the master all us an odd time, uh, Alf Lynch got good to him at, we were going to cut hay or rushes on it down at the bottom of it and he'd complain to the master or tell us we shouldn't, you know, or tramp in the mud or not go out there. But master would give us an odd horror going over, no way were we to go out. Well, maybe two or three days we wouldn't, but next thing they were out again in a few days, in a few hours, he'd forget about it. And we'd be out there again. <laughs> what were the simple games you played at school? Uh, oh, we had the uh, handball, uh, football. We had a uh, football. We used to go out in the uh, down in the, uh, we had gold, bit of, well there were bits of sticks just put down in that meadow lynch is there yet and uh, <coughs> then we'd, uh, we had, uh, we'd run races then, we had to uh, go out to the meadow then and we'd uh, run races down to the bottom of it and who'd be back up so it was, you know, it was great, uh, we had good fun. Were there any school tours? No, not at all. School tour. I never knew or never heard of a school tour. Uh, I, I went to England at 16, a month short of it, in 1935, and I hardly ever was on a bus or a train in my life. Like, there was no school tours or no going to a city or anything, you know? Oh, there was no word about them. No, in later years, the school used to join up with Cross to go on school tours. I think Pether there remembers being mm. on school tours. And uh, and I, I, I remember being on a school tour one time with Mike O'Connor. However that came about, I don't know. But uh, the bit I remember about it was um, we went to Dublin, we went to the zoo and the airport and a few of them places, and then we went to HB Dairies. <laughs> we got free ice cream and things was going a terror. We, when we were leaving there, we got another box of ice cream, the master, I think he was from Michael Connett, he brought it with him, but he decided that he'd keep it for a while, that we had enough ice cream at for the time being. So he put it in the bus and it was a rather warm day and so it moved. The next thing was it started to run out the door and we were very sorry looking, <laughs> <laughs> looking out after it. <laughs> Father McCabe, you're renowned for putting songs, writing songs and making up little bits and pieces. Are you going to sing for us tonight? Yeah, and I'll, I'll have a try at it about me. Memories of Ardlo School. Here goes. My thoughts go back to when I was young, to the days I went to school. In me two well eight ten feet, and not much to eat on the road near Ardlo School. At half past nine or ten to ten, it's down Raffney Lane I flew. And over the road and past the sign that said Guinness is good for you. Oh, take me back to the bad old days, to the days I went to school. Oh, the times were hard, low, too 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 hard low school. 
Now Biddy Stack was the local NT. She came from County Kerry. And it's often she nearly split my poor head with a bell or a sod of turf. But she had good points too, which I'll tell to you, especially when she hadn't the flu. If you were feeling unwell from a rap of the bell, she gave you sugar barley to chew. Oh, take me back to the bad old days, to the days I went to school. Oh, the times were bad, I always was sad on the road to Ardlow School. I remember the day Miss Stack didn't come because she had to go away. And although we were glad, it soon we were sad with the other teachers that came our way. They lined us out against the wall and made us learn their rule. And it soon we would swap the whole bloody lot to have Miss Stack back in Ardlow School. Oh, take me back to the bad old days, to the days I went to school. Oh, the times were bad, and I always was sad on the road to Ardlow School. Yes, indeed. Well, that was Pether McCabe. Now, Pether, in the course of that song, mentioned about a sign or signs and a certain liquid that might be good for you. That's something, apparently, that you never tried out, Charlie Conway. No, no, I never touched a drink in my life, no. Uh, I, I worked with it in London a month out of 16. I worked in a pub, and I don't know, the more I saw, but the less I thought, I never, uh, I never touched it in my life. I don't know that. <laughs> yeah, nothing the uh, nothing the uh, richer of it, but. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. Okay. We'll just remind them again, Catherine. I suppose about the the weekend's events, and in particular because obviously it's over a three-day period. This, and I mean, do people, if they go the first day, miss out on something the second day, or do they mingle over the three days? Yeah. Well, we'd like to think that people days that come on the three days that it would be something different for them. Um, on on the Saturday, the main emphasis is on the school, and uh, we're busy now at the moment. Um, the hard-working men have the school complete, and we'll be soon starting to furnish it with desks and uh, maps and whatever we're given uh, to bring back the old school days again. And then on Saturday night, we're having a Cayley and a get-together. And on the Sunday then, Sunday is the main day, really, when we will be having the mass and uh, the meal and uh, the launch of the book. Um, by uh, the last teacher in Ardler School, Sally Kyle. And uh, it is, as I said before, a very extensive book of 320 pages and lots and lots of photographs and uh, much more than the memories of the school, memories of the area. And we hope it'll be a very useful reference book for the County Museum and indeed the library. We intend to present copies of it to the County Library and the County Museum and uh, the library in Bailbury in Virginia. Good, okay. I want to turn me back to Charlie Conroy when I ask you the next question, and that is, could you tell us who the oldest pupil is uh, around now in the area that would have attended the school? Uh, well, the oldest pupil is Sister Oliver Gillick. Uh, she's a patient at the moment in the um, Omega nursing home down in Bell Turbot. She was born in 1901, and she is the oldest uh, pupil. And... Um, the youngest uh, would be that attended school would be Vincy Farley or Andrew Tackney. They were both in high infants when the school closed. And um, there was just two in high infants actually when it closed. And I think the last girl to go to Ardle School was my own sister, Noreen Allen, so, and Breda Lynch as well. They were the two last in that class. So, um, yeah, n Sister Alpha would be the oldest pupil. Uh, there's also uh, Delia Lynch. I think she would be born in 1902. And at, um, she's not that well at the moment, and I'd like to send her best wishes. And also best wishes to Jerry Trainer, who um, wrote um, his memories for the book and is ill in hospital at the moment. I wish him a speedy recovery. And also to Patsy Flynn of Dune, whose wife 
Brig trainer went to Ardo School too and he's been keeping a very active interest in the work of the committee and he's um, not that well at the moment either and I wish both of them speedy recovery. In actual fact, I think I spoke to a brother of Pat's who's recently that's home from England and probably around for the event. Not too sure, was it Kevin? Kevin, Kevin. yeah. Well, Father Charlie Gorman, or old Gorman, is it you're the uh, curate here in the Cross Muller Parish? You looked at me when I said the O. Is the O in it or is it out of it? I think the O was inserted by an uncle who was a priest in California way back in the 20s and he wanted to up his status a little bit and perhaps, uh, you know, belong to the nobility. So instead of just playing Gorman, he put in O. Did that help to make a man of you? <laughs> it gives me a touch of class, I suppose. <laughs> 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 right, okay. Enough of that. The, the school reunion, August Bank holiday weekend. A uh, good idea, a lot of work, a lot of hard work obviously involved, a lot of thought and a lot of effort and uh, let's hope that the weather indeed in particular will go along with it. Well, I mean, I'm a Johnny come lately. I'm, I'm nearly not on the committee, but uh, I'm full of admiration. You know, when you're driving on that road from Virginia to Bailieborough, you think you're going to drive into the forecourt of this old dilapidated grey building, but it's only when you hear the stories and the memories uh, at a gathering like this that you realise how much life there was there, um, you know, in the 75 years of its existence. Uh, but for next weekend, it will, won't be a grey building. It will be full of colour and full of life once again. Uh, it's great to see it, and the committee has been extremely diligent and hard-working in their research, so I'm sure they'll get the support they deserve. It'll be great to see a tent, uh, a bit of nightlife down in Ardlow, <laughs> which it lacks. <laughs> um, and we're all looking forward to next weekend, Michael, yeah. Just a little bit about your own background and your own school days. Well, I went to the Brothers in Cavan. I went to Kilnacrot. I think I closed down Kilnacrot. Well, it closed down shortly after I left it anyway, the secondary school. And then I went to St. Pat's for the last two years and from there to Maynooth. So that completes my education. Mind you, my education is greatly enhanced tonight. Um, I was just talking to our new bishop, uh, Leo O'Reilly, during the week, and I was telling him that I'm killed out trying to sustain conversations about football. I can go for about five minutes before I come out waving the white flag, and he asked me, how are you on the second cut of silage? I said, <laughs> I'm learning fast. I'm learning about vegetable growing from Charlie Conway here. So, you know, those topics are very... <laughs> I'm expert. <laughs> you could end up a poor farmer. I could, yeah. yeah. Well, I'm sorry, yeah. <laughs> Certainly. All right, okay. That's, of course, Father, Father Charlie O'Gorman. And, uh, Father, you, you have something else to add to us? Well, <coughs> seeing the Father Charlie talk there about football and it's the burning topic at the, at the moment, uh, I just wanted to mention there that there's a bit on football in the book, uh, an interesting piece, and there was a team at one stage in Lisnabontre, which wouldn't be too far away from Ardlow, it would be the very lower end of our parish, and believe it or not, they made their way to a senior league final at one stage, I think it was in 1930, and got beaten by Cornafane. Now, that would have been the club that the great Donald Morgan had have started his career with, and uh, P.D. Morgan, Pat McNamee, who played with Lisnabontre, another famous county man. Uh, the club didn't last too long, and uh, he kind of joined up then with Cross. But uh, there was another team in Ardlow to be a kind of a, a local team now. It, it, it wouldn't be affiliated to the county board or that kind of thing. And they used to play matches every other Sunday with a, another unaffiliated team from next Virginia called Mullamore. Uh, someone took on to say that Mullamore was known as the Mullamore Dreadnoughts and Ardlow was known as the Ardlow Standbacks. I don't know whether that was true or not, but <laughs> that's what was said. But th them games back in the 30s, them games were played religiously nearly every Sunday. And uh, I suppose that's why that football means so much in the county cabin and why there was so many cabin people in Clonus last Sunday. Well, I suppose it's only fair to mention it on the weekend. There's in it, of course, you're well represented from the area on this county team that you're hinting at. That's true. Uh, the Colin Club, which is the club from the parish of Mola, has three members on the county team, and uh, it's great to see it. It's, I suppose, it's great to see Cavan doing well, but it leaves it even better when there's three players from the local team on it, and we want to wish them well and hope that they go the whole way and bring back Sam to the parish.
You're not asking for much, are you, really? No. Not really, right, Father James Rock? You're the vice chairman of this <coughs> organising committee. Isn't that right? Tell me about the early day. When did you start planning all of this? Was it 12 months ago, 12 years ago? Well, we started last November. And I didn't come to the first meeting, but I had, at the time, I had a bit of an accident and I had plenty of time to go to the meetings then. So, uh, before Christmas, we had two or three meetings. I came to three meetings on crutches and everybody was wondering what was wrong with me. But anyway, that's when it started. So we got the ball going anyway. Yeah, but it didn't always run smooth, did it? I mean, from my own experience, I mean, and uh, indeed no, anything no, you, you organise like that, there's a little bit of pushing and shoving here and there to be done, isn't it? Well, our, our first aim was fundraising. And, well... We were quite successful in a few round table quizzes and got loads of sponsorship, which was a great help to us. Uh, that's right. Uh, James said uh, fundraising was our first uh, uh, thing we, we tried to, to get off the ground. We had a, a table quiz down in Ina House. Uh, I think it was, in fact, the 31st of January, which was very successful. We packed the place. In fact, we were like sardines, as somebody said in it. There was no place for the tables at all. It was, it was a, it was a great start for the committee. Then, uh, sometime later, we decided that the first one was such a success. We'd have another one. So we had another one. Then, it was St Patrick's weekend. There was, I think, the Friday before St Patrick's Day. St Patrick's Day being on Monday, we had a, another table quiz in Ina House, and it wasn't just as big, but very near couple of tables short of the first one. Yeah. Some of the sardines got away, obviously. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. So that weekend was a very we busy weekend for us in Patrick's weekend. We also had a, a float made uh, of Outlaw School and we had it in the parade in Muller. And we had tickets out for that weekend to, uh, for uh, a raffle on St. Patrick's Day, which was held in McNamee's pub in Muller. Uh, that too was very successful. For us, so we had three, three, uh, there was three fundraising events we had, and they all very successful. So then we didn't uh, have any then until uh, uh, I think it was the 25th of May. Then we had a, an auction and cake set here in Cross Hall, yeah, and uh, so that was a great success too. So that's mainly how we started our fundraising, and uh, then we got a lot of sponsorships. Almost everything we were on, we got s total sponsorship. You know, we didn't really have to dip in our own pockets, our own funds. Are you glad that it's all coming to a head now, James, and looking forward to this weekend? Well, <laughs> I suppose we are, yeah. Well, we had, we were busy. If it wasn't for, fo if it wasn't, if it wasn't football, it was the school. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's coming to a head. It's coming to a close now, and the school is nearly finished. And it's looking well. What it was a lot of hard work yeah. now. What about uh, yourself then? Do you have any personal memories from Ardo School in uh, your time? Surely. The best memory was Cross won the Junior Championship in 1962, I think. Late 62. Mm. There was, um, I think there was a Senior Championship final with Virginia Bell the same day in Bretney Park. And in a couple of days after, Brenda Smith came down at the Junior Championship Trophy to the school and we all got a drink of it. And mm. So it was like looking at Sam McGuire now at that time. <laughs> so, also when three o'clock would come, there'd be a great stampede out the gate and a cheer maybe. Were mm. well, the holidays a special time? Yeah, well you wouldn't get the holidays out until about the second week in July. I'm sure it was great. Right, OK, Catherine, you wanted to come yeah, in Just then? on the sponsorship, uh, we're very grateful to the Cavan Monaghan Rural Development uh, Co-op. Uh, we put our project towards to them and uh, they very graciously give us a contribution of a grant towards running the whole weekend and uh, for the writing of the book. So I'd like to thank them especially and also to all our sponsors uh, for their generous contributions. Uh, we have a list of them all in the book of the people that give us money over the period of time.
Now then, we'll remind you once again about a school reunion. It's Ardler School coming up August Bank Holiday Week. And there is also, that's a three-day event, Friday, Saturday and Sunday. Or is it Saturday, Sunday and Monday? <laughs> Saturday, Saturday, Sunday and Monday, rather. And also a comprehensive book there with more than 300 pages. Rosemary O'Reilly, of course, you are now. You're a daughter of Charlie's and you're also teaching in Knockbride, is it, first of all? Um, Tony Duff National School. And um, I myself went to Ardlow School, as did my father and his family, family of ten of our, and four of our family of six. And we were born and reared in Ardlow, went to school in Ardlow, and I'm very glad to have been in Ardlow. In every, um, uh, some of my fondest memories are going to school on a creamery trailer, and um, either with Daddy or uh, with Paddy Gorman when he was working he would do, do some of the loads and we had we had great waves from neighbours and we had great fun and then when we didn't go by tractor and trailer we went through the fields in our wellies of course and we actually only wore shoes on special occasions when the priests would be coming to ask us our catechism or when um, something special was happening and we were very happy in our wellies and we played football in the wellies ran around boys and girls had great fun chasing each other played games like Queenie I.O. Um, oh, lots of hopscotch you name it we played a tig we tigged for we did miles of tig <laughs> and um, um, I had I was the eldest of the family so I remember starting off big jump from the um, at home and the secure security. We lived in a long lane, plenty of hens, chickens, animals. Uh, I was always in the wellies, I was around with my parents. So then Sella Fox came, she was a good friend of the family, and she came and herself and Mammy went off to school and I was as happy as Larry till the door was closed and Mammy turned to go home. So it's, I suppose, ironic in a way that I kicked up a big fuss when I started. Um, a year later, I couldn't, I wouldn't stay at home even when it was snowing. I wouldn't miss a day. Uh, we had great fun the day, and when it snowed. Um, but I'll go back to that. And it's just ironic that.